lead your life. Okay. Welcome everyone to the Quantum Alignment Show. My name is Caroline Kennedy, and I am your host for today. We're going to be talking about all things projector. I myself am a 6'2 projector, emotionally uh, defined for my authority and off the roof. Um, and I'm a mother of three um, I, that I successfully raised without breaking anything. So I have a little experience with how to handle the energy. And today I'm going to be taking your questions and comments and I'm going to be sharing a slideshow with you on projector invitations, understanding the gift of the invitation, and also how to make decisions using your authority. Projectors are really unique. There are so many ways that we can be defined as far as our authority. We have more variation than any of the other types. Um, we also have a wide range of uh, ways that we can be defined as projectors. The only rule is no spleen and no, no motor to the throat. So there's a wide range of um, projectors and how they express in the world. So I look forward to sharing that with you today. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen. And today we're talking about all things projector, the gifts and opportunities of our strategy and authority. Um, one thing I notice as I go through um, classes and, and boards and Facebook pages is that when people find out they're a projector, there's this really sudden sense of doom, like, oh my gosh, uh, I have to wait for the invitation. I don't have energy. What am I going to do? And what I want to do today is help you see the gift in being a projector and how very extraordinary and precious we are and how important it is for us to fully understand how we're here to operate in the world and to claim our space as who we are and to quit trying to, to fit into a generator and manifested world. So common projector complaints that I hear, they're depressed to learn that they are not an energy type, even though they recognize the label the instant they hear it. It's like, oh yeah, that explains it, why I struggle so much, where it looks so easy for other people. Projectors are discouraged that they have to wait for an invitation. And then they're frustrated by a lifetime of seeking recognition and being ignored or rejected. In addition to this, projectors have a history of experiencing burnout because they're trying to keep up with everyone else and their expectations. They're highly conditioned and they can feel lonely because they are not being seen and recognized. Your projector aura is a gift. Projectors are here to guide the energies of others. And in order for us to be able to guide others, we have to be fully present and aware of the other. And that involves not working, not being wrapped up in the day-to-day -day so much that we can't see and be aware of the energy of those around us. By working in the typical generator world, we interfere with the necessary perspective required for generators, for projectors to be fully aware. Projectors who are not fully aware and present will not be able to focus properly on the other. And in addition, when projectors are not fully aware and present, they're going to have challenges in discerning between who is on their fractal and available for guidance and those people who are not their people. So your projector aura, in a sense, economizes your energy that, so that you can use it in an empowered way once you're here to be recognized. And since we have so many mothers on the call today, I, I kind of want to address you right now when it comes to economizing your energy. This really comes down to the discernment of how you can best be of value to your family and your children. What are your gifts? And recognizing that what we're conditioned to do and to be is not necessarily what you're here to offer your family. So try to discern between what you are here to give your family, what they most need from you, and let some of the other things go. Obviously, it's, it's, it's hard. You have to provide childcare. You, you have to feed your family. But I'm, what I'm saying is look at the standards and be kind to yourself and, and make it work for you. It, this is your family and it's, and it's your home and it should adapt to your energy. 
Um, I want to talk a little bit about rejection and not being seen because this is a big one for projectors. Being rejected or not being recognized is actually a gift because it allows us to save our energy. And I found some quotes um, in a recent book that I read that I, it's not a human design book, but it's, it's so relevant to us as projectors. From the regenerative purpose, the dynamic nature of the way we choose to work by Wendy May um, are the following quotes. Rejection enables us to allocate time and spend our energy intelligently. Um, again, I'm going to address some others. If you've gone to functions um, or gone to groups as a parent and felt outside, um, not seen, kind of invisible, um, recognize that this is actually protection. This is this prevents you from getting pulled into all those things that mothers can get pulled into and, and, and volunteering for things and extending yourself so much so that you burn yourself out. So recognize that not being seen and recognized and you know experiencing rejection is actually a way to protect your energy. Next, when we embrace the blessings of rejection, we reclaim energy that is otherwise poured into earning acceptance. Again, this is huge for projectors um, and projector mothers. Um, instead of trying to prove yourself and be accepted and, and as, as a parent, be the parent you are and recognize that not following the script of a generator world is allowing you to reclaim the energy that you need specifically for your relationships with your family. Finally, when we stop trying to sell ourselves and convince others to love us, we have more to give to those who are ready to accept our gifts. Um, we spend so much time trying to do for people that don't want what we're giving them or offering our advice or giving direction to them, recognizing that Waiting for an invitation and waiting for recognition means that you can step into the fullest expression of yourself. And it saves all that energy and the resulting bitterness that comes from giving things that, that aren't recognized and accepted. So like a shock from an electrical outlet or a burn from a hot stove, rejection is feedback and guidance on how to avoid pain in our lives. So we spend less time tending to the pain and more time engaged in the activities studies and relationships that engage and stoke our passions. So what is an invitation anyway? For those who, of you who are new to human design, this is, this is a big, a big um, theme. And it's also a big source of, of frustration because the, the whole waiting period. So an invitation can come in several ways. First of all, it's a direct request. It's a request of your time, use of your energy, expression of your wisdom, or request of your knowledge. Um, requests are requests. You are able to deny it, and we, and we will talk about that later when we talk about your authority. A re, an invitation can be an energetic opening that allows you to share your natural gifts and to serve. So it may not be spoken. It may be a situation that comes up and you feel the energy, and it's like you feel this pathway or a river that you can just step into and go down. and 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 it's, it's a full body thing. It's not a mental thing. Another invitation is an acceptance of your offer of opinion, information, or other form of input. So as projectors, if there's something that you want to offer to people, it's perfectly okay to ask someone, can I offer some advice? Or can I offer some input? Or can I share with you? And if they say yes, then that can be considered an invitation. But if they say no, or if they hem and haw, um, then that's best energy kept it to yourself. Once you are invited to a job, a relationship, a group, or some other sort of um, invitation, you do not need repeated invitations. You don't need to get repeated invitations from your friends or um, from relationships. You can gauge the vitality of the invitation over time by the energy that you continue to have in the situation. So using your authority to respond to an invitation. While the majority of projectors have either splenic or emotional authority, there are several other types of authority that are unique to projectors. 
Emotional authority is the most common projector decision-making authority, and splenic is the second most common. Meanwhile, the other three types of authority are verbal authorities. Mental projectors are referred to as having no authority, meaning that they don't have any authority in the body to guide them. Now, while they're referred to sometimes as mental projectors, they're not designed to use their mind. Um, that can be confusing for people. Then we also have self-projected authority, and then we have projectors with ego authority, and they are the rarest. Um, manifestors can also have ego authority, but it's expressed in a, in a different way. And, and like I mentioned, mental, self, and ego authority all require verbal expression in the decision-making process. So I'm going to give you an example here of emotional authority, and this is emotional authority with a tribal wave, meaning that the uh, emotional solar plexus is defined by a tribal channel between the emotional solar plexus and the will. Um, as you can see, this is a projector that has a lot of definition and two motors. So this projector would have a bit more access to energy and would actually need to express this energy over time in order to live healthfully. Next, we have another example of a emotional projector with a tribal wave. And as you can see, this projector looks very different, a lot of openness. Their only definition is through their tribal wave. And this is actually the chart of John F. Kennedy. Next, we have an example of emotional authority with root definition. And this is the most common emotional authority for projectors. And that is because there's three different channels that can create this definition here. Whereas the only other channel that can create the emotional definition is the single tribal, tribal channel right here. This here is the chart of Barack Obama. And um, when you have the root emotional authority, it can be confusing because not only do you have to make your decision over time, but it pulses on and off. The root pulses on and off. So it can be more challenging to make your decisions. Oops. Emotional authority for projectors, you need to wait out the emotional wave before accepting the invitation. When you receive an invitation, um, you're going to be someplace on your wave. You could be at the very bottom of your wave where you're feeling very pessimistic about things. Or you may be at the top of the wave where everything's just going great and you can't imagine anything possibly going wrong if you made this decision. However, this wave goes up and down. And so it's important to wait out your feelings throughout this wave until you get a sense of clarity. And for me, it's just like a sense of being able to breathe in and say, yes, this is really a good decision for me. It's when we make decisions and when we accept invitations spontaneously as emotional authority that, that we get overextended and, and we experience problems. Um, this is a way of protecting your energy. It's a way of making sure that you're spending your energy correctly. It's really challenging for projectors because we get so few invitations to wait for that emotional authority, but it's very important. Um, the length of the emotional wave is determined by the channel defining the solar plexus and it's like I said it's impacted by the pulse of the root um, and as we have two presidents that were projectors and um, I shared their charts with you already next we have an example of a splenic projector and this is definition between this the splenic center and the root or it can also occur between the splenic center and the ego the will center or the splenic center and the, uh, the G center. Uh, splenic projectors know in the moment when they receive an invitation whether or not it's right for them. And it's very quick. Like it's, it, they know it and then it's gone. So it's really important for splenic projectors to be in touch with this awareness and to learn how to trust it. This is awareness that's based, this, it's survival based and it's very primal and it's intuitive. If you feel that you're challenged in trusting your intuition, I find it's really helpful to track it over time by making notes of it, either mentally or writing it down, um, and you'll start to see a pattern. Uh, Brad Pitt is an example of a projector with uh, splenic authority, and we can see how he, um, how 
helpful that would be in his work as an actor because he can intuitively in the moment determine how to respond when he's when he's in a scene and doing his work. And um, next we're going to talk about mental projectors. So mental projectors are defined, there's no definition below the throat. It can be the head and the ajna only. It can be the head, the ajna, and the throat, or it can be just the ajna and the throat here. Mental projectors, um, it is so important for them to share with those in their, their circle what their authority is because they can be exhausting. So um, mental projectors, or they're referred to as having no authority, um, and they're referred to as having no authority because there's no authority coming from within the centers in the body. The authority comes from outside the body. Mental projectors need to hear themselves and they require a sounding board. Mental projectors do not need advice or guidance. They just need to speak and hear and feel themselves as part of the decision-making process. And this is what is so important for your family and your friends to understand about you and, and your coworkers. Because you can tire people out with your talking and people are gonna to want to chime in with their advice and their guidance. And if you just share with them, I just need to be heard. I just need to hear how this sounds. Then your conversations will be a lot more effective. The decision-making process comes through a body awareness, the physical response to hearing themselves speak. They may need to speak to multiple people and in multiple venues before they achieve clarity. Um, and as I mentioned, if you have no authority, let people in your inner circle know about your decision-making process. Next, we have self-projected authority. And this is definition between, there's nothing uh, defined below the G center. Um, and this is a, a pretty unique authority. Self-projectors have a deep inner knowing of what is good for them, and it comes from their sense of self rather than intuition. It's like having um, a homing device in your chest. Um, when somebody gives you an invitation, you, you know right away, this is good for me. It does not require time or waiting to know what's right. And it can be heard in the certainty of the voice. It's, it's speaking without thinking about it. It's coming directly from the self. In order to exercise this type of authority, it's important to trust and be assured of your identity. Um, it's very common for self-projectors to like the sound of their voice because it is such a great tool. Mick Jagger is an example of a um, uh, self-projected authority projector. Also unique to self-projectors is that invitation can come from within through their own voice for personal actions. They may get a calling to write a book or to take a class and it comes from within. And, and so they don't need an invitation to do these things. They just need to follow this energy that's coming from within. Self projectors are excellent guides for others seeking direction because they are so skilled at them themselves, but they can only share this information when they are invited. Uh, a good example of a, uh, self-authority projectors, Jackie Chan. We can see this not only in his personality, but in the way he operated in the body, how assured he was of where he needed to be physically and mentally in order to execute the things that he was doing. Finally, we have an example of the most elusive authority, which is the ego projected authority. And for projectors, it comes through the 2531. Um, for manifestors, it would be through the 2145, which is a whole different, whole different kind of energy. Ego projectors make their decisions through the verbal impact that they have on others. What they say has a certain gravitas, and it's very clear what their decision is going to be. Um, the ego dis authority is all about what's good for them. Do they have the energy for it? What can they get from it? Like the self-projector, they can speak out the decision, but it's different. It, 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 it feels different because it does have that impact of the, of the will center. And an example of a ego projector is Wayne Dyer. 
um, he really had an impact through his words when he was invited to speak and, and provided a lot of guidance. Our projector signature is success. And I want you to think about this. Projectors are 20 to 23% of the population. We are not here to initiate. We're not here to work sustainably like generators. Yet our signature is success. And we live in this culture where success is viewed as the result of projector initiation and generator work. But truly, success is our definition. And it's here based on our quality of being as opposed to our material possessions and the structures that um, surround us. Um, the future is gonna require more awareness in order for us as a species to be successful and evolve. And projectors are here to lead that. It's our ability to tap into source, to trust into the unseen that's provided to our authority in order to provide resources as opposed to trusting in the structures and systems to provide for our needs. Um, so that's just a really, really powerful idea that I want you to embrace, that we are here to embody success and success is different than what the cultural norms are. And it's our turn to, to play with that and um, to recognize what that, what that looks like. Okay. I'm trying to stop sharing so here. Scroll to the top of your, of your page that you're sharing on. You should uh -huh. be oh, stopped. There, there we go, thank you. All right. Um, did we have any questions or comments that came up? Um, we've had lots, as you remember, we had lots of questions or comments mm -hmm. that came up in the Zoom webinar chat. We have, um, at this time, nothing has come up on Facebook. So other kind of going through. Uh, so Pippa's saying, I'm a poor one struggling with tech and being a projector. Uh, we have that. You have almost all the different authorities I've been looking. It's like Catherine from the UK. I'm a one three projector with emotional solar plexus. Uh, when you were talking to Stephanie, I have the left cross of upheaval, probably why I was blessed with four generator kids. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. I um, see a, a post in the chat here that I. I want to share um, because this is this is the wisdom of being a projector it's from Nanette and she said once I learned I am a projector and how to manage my energy I didn't have to have injuries and accidents as an excuse to rest and take breaks instead of go 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 and crash and I'm wondering how many people here find themselves pushing and pushing and pushing to the point where they do have an injury or an illness or some sort of incident in their life that forces them to stop. This is what happens when we live in the not self. If we don't take care of ourselves, if we don't honor our projector energy, something's going to make it happen for us. Marcia says, I used to be so grateful to get sick. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah that's so true. Um, thank you for sharing that, Nanette. That is really a powerful lesson. Um, before we go on to the other messages that are coming in there, we did have in the Q&A, Marianne said, I'm a 4-2 projector, most phonic projected authority, having done a lot of work in defining my life purpose. I feel that being a coach healer is where I should be. I've been asking the universe to bring forth an invitation for me to use these gifts, but it has been many months, almost two years of waiting. I've not been given an opportunity to do this. Is this a sign? that being a coach healer is not my true calling? Should I continue to wait? Thank you. So one thing I'm gonna say is that the chart is a very complex interactive tool and being a projector and your profile, and she said four two, but that, that would be a two four, correct? A two four projector? Yes. Yeah, um, th that's just a piece of it. Um, First of all, you are designed um, to be able to use your network to 
to make contacts to offer on your services. So I, I don't know um, what you've done so far, but, but creating and fostering this network and being open with this network about what you want to do and what you have to offer is important. The next thing I want to say is um, the work that projectors need to do before they offer their gifts is to value themselves. That is the, that's the most critical piece. You have to see yourself value and you have to take care of yourself and, and nurture yourself first before you can be recognized by others for the gifts that you have. So you could, you could check into those areas um, of your life and see how you're doing there. And then there's other, um, other things in the chart as well that can, that can, um, illuminate why you might be having struggles. Uh, but it definitely goes just beyond being a projector in your profile. Did have one person share their chart earlier, but I didn't see questions that went with it. Um, Mary had shared the chart. Would you like me to pull it up and share my screen? Sure, that would be great. Another piece I think for projectors that's really important to move forward is to uh, practice surrender. <laughs> and this is, this is really challenging, but um, there's so many synchronistic stories of what happens when we get out of our own way. And I'll give an example um, from my own life. Before I even knew about human design, I was working in a position where I had been groomed to move up. And once the opportunity came to move up, um, politics kind of took it out of my grasp. And I was very frustrated because I'd been pushing for this so far, for so long. And um, I ended up quitting without having another job. And once I surrendered and, and quit, and what I did is I took some time, I visited my kids, I worked in the garden, I did the things that made me happy. It only took about two weeks and I literally got an invitation for an even better position somewhere else from someplace I hadn't even heard of before. I, I hadn't even applied to it. Um, so surrendering to a situation and recognizing this isn't for me, stepping back and engaging in the things that feed you and make you happy and give you joy are what creates the energetic openings for life to come in, for invitations to come for you. This is a really challenging piece because everybody is caught up in, well, how do I pay my bills and how do I, you know, live my life? Um, it has to be trust and surrender. And um, I think the best way to do this is to look for examples of other people doing it and, and gaining comfort and wisdom from their experience in order to have the courage to do it yourself. Are you ready? You have that chart? Okay, so we have Mary, and, and there was no question with this. Um, this is curious because Mary has a very similar design to mine as far as what is defined and what is open. Um, so she's got a lot of energy here between the 4037 and um, a lot of definition here. And then her openness is the root center is where she's really going to be challenged because that's the pressure to do things that that may not necessarily have been requested of her. This is a real energy suck, this open route for projectors because what happens is this open route feels pressure not only to get things done for themselves, but they can take on the pressure of people around them. And so when people make requests of someone with an open route, and it's a simple yes or no question. It can be, um, what are we having for dinner tonight? The open route just doesn't respond to what are we having for dinner. And I haven't planned anything is a perfectly good you know, answer, especially for a projector. But this open route goes, oh my gosh, I haven't done dinner yet. I've been busy doing this and this. And um, don't they know all these things that I have to do? And what's wrong with me? Why can't I get it together? All these mental processes start going on all this pressure 
starts coming in and the open root just explodes at the person asking the question. Um, so it's really important with this open root, just, just address, address the question. Yes or no is fine. Simple answer is fine. You don't have to go into story. You don't have to apologize. You don't have to um, get down on yourself for not getting things done. Just simply answer the question. Now, I'm slightly confused, but um, Mary says, I don't get what's going on with the lower split. There's a defined root center and it's connected to both the spleen and the solar plexus. So maybe this is a different chart. Was it Mary she, Parks or is it? Um, well, Mary? it's loading right now because there okay. was that she, oh, this is a different chart that she wants you to, oh, so this is chart that goes with Mary Parks. So she loaded um, Alex's chart. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. And again, there's no question with this. Is that correct? or comment with this chart. Um, what we see here is someone with... Well, her comment says, I don't get what's going on with the lower split. There's a defined root center that's connected to both the spleen and the solar split. So I guess how the so, energy of that goes or what to do with the split. Right, right. So Alex is someone who definitely needs people. Um, the, it, the split is looking to be connected. Um, and this can occur in any type, not just projector. Uh, but look at how hard it is to bridge this split. I mean, I'm trying to find the easiest way to do it. It would probably be right here with these, you know, getting a 37 and a 45 um, to, to complete that tribal wave or to connect uh, one of these channels from the spleen to the throat. Uh, going up through the middle um, is going gonna, is gonna to take some doing. So this is someone who definitely needs to connect with other people in order to um, feel whole and to express themselves. Now, would you say there's something, because you had talked a lot about the root before and mm -hmm. um, that energetically, is there Energetically, something? they're going to be, they're going to be creating pressure in the lives of others um, with, with all the definition. Um, and look at all the ways that, um, I mean, this is just a really heavily defined root. I, I, I can't see all the way to the bottom either to see whether the um, 41 is, okay, there we go. Yeah, so this is someone with a lot of, lot of corrective energy and no way to share it, right? Right here, they can see all sorts of things that need to be, um, that need to be fixed or um, aligned. They can see all these patterns and they have no way to share it. And then they've got the 21 here that, um, you know, they wish to express and share resources. And um, that makes it real challenging for them. They can't get this energy up to the throat. So they definitely need people. Um, as far as what's going on with this, as far as a projector, I think you have to be real careful. You've got two energy centers um, that make you feel like you can do more than you can do. So make sure that you're really, really um, paying attention and not, not overextending yourself. The open will is gonna be, you know, provide you with the, the sense that you need to prove yourself, which you do not need to do. And the open head is gonna, you know, make you feel pressure to answer or provide um, answers for people and to receive a lot of inspiration and understand you're not here to act on it. Um, you're just here to entertain those ideas. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, as a projector, they're also going to be, you know, struggling with that open G center with, uh, a sense of their identity and direction. I believe the same question was by Mary, was also with Mary Parks. And so they don't, doesn't look like they get things to the throat. But I'm going to stop share. And we had three questions, I, comments that came in through the, in the Q&A. Okay. Um, okay, the first one was from Linda. 
I am a 6'2 projector and I've been working on lovability and self-worth resiliency keys. My challenge is with a son who is a reflector and married to a manifesting generator. I have I am never heard by them and invitations never come. What do you feel that I should do? My emotional definition always makes me feel dreadfully sick when I have to speak to them. I don't want to give up, but it's really difficult. Also, I have the 1333 and 3740. So she's, um, she's emotional authority. And her son is amplifying her emotions. Um, it could be very uncomfortable sometimes for him to be um, around her if, she, if she's um, giving out this emotional energy. But one thing I'm going to say about um, being heard in the family as a projector, sometimes we have to recognize that the people that we love and the people that are in our family are not necessarily our people. And they're not the ones that are supposed to be recipients of our wisdom. And this is very, this is so hard for people to, um, to take on. But what I would say is, is, is recognize the people in your life that do appreciate you, that do recognize you, and do give you invitations, and focus your energy on them for, your, for, um, for that feeling of success. And don't personalize what's going on with your husband and your son, because it's all energy. It's not intentional. Um, your son, as a reflector, is going to reflect the, the energy of the household. So anything that's going on between yourself and your husband is going to be reflected through him. It's kind of, it's going to be a magnifying glass. So the happier you and your husband are in your relationship and your communication, the, um, the better it is going to be for your, your son. Now, it sounds like your son is out of the house. I think you said he had a wife. Um, um, that's what I would, that's where it was kind of, um, the sentence is kind of confusing. It says, my challenge is with the son who's a reflector and married to the manifesting generator. Oh, she, he, oh, he's married to the manifesting that, generator. Well, yeah, that was one sentence. So I'm, I'm not, I believe. Okay. And she's um, never heard by them. And, and she's never heard by them. And, and they may not be your people. That's, and again, it's hard to, um, to, to accept this, but this is part of the surrender process is that your, your advice, we have a very specific probing energy and it's not for everybody. It's for the specific people that can benefit from your energy. And it's not necessarily going to be um, in your family members. And so um, by looking at your chart, you can see what energies you're trying to express. If you have a lot of correction in your chart, or um, you basically you have to step back and, you know, only offer when you're seen and, and release everything else. And then if they're asking you to do things as a parent to help them out, um, and you feel like, well, if you did this, I wouldn't have to. Just, just step back from that. Step back from the whole thing. And, and, and um, don't make conditions and don't try to fix and, and allow them to, to have their path. Um, explaining the dynamics to your son about what being a reflector is like and explaining to your daughter-in-law the need for her to be very patient with him that he needs to um, to take longer longer times to make decisions and to understand how he feels about situations in the world should help their um, relationship. But how challenging! A manifesting generator just wants to boom, and the reflector saying, "Uh, uh, gotta wait." <laughs> so, okay, um, Micah in the Q and A said, "As a four six mental projector." I have no inner authority. So having such a powerful and creative mind, channels 6447 and 4323 are my only defined ones. So no definition below the throat. Mm -hmm. I find it very challenging not to use my mind to make decisions. So how lucky that you're a 46 because you have a network and use that network. Um, speak. Speak 
um, out your decisions and allow people to hear you without offering you advice. Um, you, what you need to do basically is bypass the mind. In talking, in talking, you get into this stream of um, verbalization that's bypassing the mental judgment and the mental process. And as you speak it, your body will feel when you're finally hitting on the correct thing. Um, but definitely use your use your um, your circle of friends and family as a sounding board. Let them know you need to just be heard, that you don't need direction, and ask them to be patient with you. And maybe, uh, and again, as a fourth line, this should be easy. You know, diversify the people that you share your information with so you don't overwhelm or exhaust them because being a mental projector can be. For those on the other side, it can at times be exhausting. Now, Marsha had, um, I think it's like a same question may be asked two different ways. So first she asked, without any energy centers to find, what I find has happened is that any desire or longing I've had for fill in the blank dies like an unwatered plant. So when an invitation finally does come, I feel completely indifferent and dead inside. She continues to say, my only defined centers are the G to the spleen and Ajna to the head. Um, so she's not a mental projector. No, she's, her quote goes on to reference Shakespeare, for me, the time is always out of joint. A similar thing happens with my physical appetite. If I'm deeply hungry and food doesn't come, eventually I just collapse and my hunger is gone and I'm dead. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, G, G to the spleen would make her a splenic projector. Splenic. And so there is, there is the importance for her to honor the impulse in the moment, um, to honor whether she has the energy for it and to follow it and not to uh, procrastinate or postpone it because it does come. Like, like she said, you know, it's there and then it's gone. Yeah, that, that's exactly what a splenic projector is all about. It's about very much being in the moment. And so it's very important to protect your energy so that when something comes up that you get a splenic kit on, that you have the energy to follow that and, and, and to, and to um, take advantage of that, that splenic impulse. Um, not being too busy so that you don't hear that or not being so busy that you can't attend to it in the moment. Uh, Carl asks, hi, I'm an energetic projector with emotional authority, 2-5 profile. What I often experience in relationships is that the moment I'm all in or care, listen, my partners often feel overwhelmed and suddenly start to reject me. How do you explain that? So a couple things would, could be going on. And, and again, it's not just, um, you know, the, the chart is a pretty complex uh, interactive body that you have to look at multiple things. So first of all, as an um, emotional projector, if, uh, if somebody else is open emotionally, they can feel overwhelmed by your need to connect with them. Also, as a 2-5, um, your, your fifth line, people are going to project upon you. Um, when they're feeling good and they're with you, you, you know, you can get the kudos for that. And when they start not feeling so well and they're with you, you get the you get the blame for that as well. You get the, um, th there could be other things, like I said, going on in the chart besides that, but being aware of your emotional energy. Um, did he say how his emotion, uh, emotional solar plexus was defined? Did I miss he that? has not yet, no. Okay. Um, especially, you know, I'm guessing that he's probably going to be defined uh, through the root. Um, if he's defined through the 1949, um, those people can, can uh, the, the 19 is really, really hypersensitive. Um, if they're through the, the 59, 30, uh, the 55, 39, um, these are people that experience, you know, great waves of melancholy, which can be intimidating and overwhelming for other people. And then the 41, 30, these people are intense. So, He's actually defined through the 3740. Okay, okay. Um, so, 
Yeah, yeah, I would say that, it, you know, it's probably that emotional definition. That's more of a sense of um, community and commitment and agreements and um, they're really important to you and they may not be as important to, uh, you know, the partners that you're choosing. Um, Mary posts in the chat, speaking for all projectors, how the heck do, Good. How the heck do we manifest not simply what we need, but what we desire want? It seems impossible when we are so overwhelmed by a non-supportive environment, exhausted or burned out, and in such low vibration states trying to simply get by surviving in society. Um, so there's the manifesting what we need and manifesting what we want. Um, you have to really trust in the wisdom of the projector energy. Sometimes we can, you know, want things that are actually going to drain us if we get them. So taking a look at, at what you want um, and why you want it and what's going to happen when you have it, it can be helpful. Um, there's, there's so much... <clears throat> Manifestation means so many different things to different people, along with the whole idea of abundance. Um, for, for projectors to manifest, <clears throat> again, it comes to making space for something. Being in joy, doing the things you love, valuing yourself, and not being so busy with other things that the thing you're trying to manifest can't come in. And then, of course, is this thing that you want to manifest, is it actually good for you? Is it something that's going to serve you? There's a lot of pieces of the puzzle. Um, so maybe writing about it, getting clarity about it um, would be helpful. Okay. <laughs> Someone wants a farm with 100 acres, that's not very projector like <laughs> Unless you have a lot of generator kids to put to work. <laughs> So since we started a little late, we're coming at the top of the hour, and I see two question, two more questions that came in. Would you okay. like to answer those? Sure. Or actually, three more questions. Um, first one came in on our first one from Facebook. Sharon says, my daughter is a 2-4 emotional projector on the cross of rulership. Teaching her to wait for an invitation for emotional clarity is very challenging. Any advice? Um, she's your daughter. This is her journey. And um, uh, you can only give her advice and guidance if she asks for it. She's got the cross of rulership. That may not be happening. Um, if she does come to you, I think it's really helpful to get people to look at their lives retrospectively. Um, where did they wait for the invitation and what was the gift of that? And where did they push forward and what happened then? And it, a lot of times it's just a matter of, you know, having the experience over and over again until you recognize the pattern of, you know, if I wait for the invitation, my life goes smoothly and effortlessly. If I push forth, I'm just going to be frustrated and angry. And here she's got, you know, she's got a lot of strong energy where she wants to be in charge and she wants to express herself and, and share the fact that she knows about you know how to use resources and delegate and it's only it's only a gift if it's invited and she needs to wait um, did you want to um, what does great waves of melancholy mean when you have the 3955 channel so yeah the 3955 is a is um is a very emotional individual channel um, these people can swing from feeling really connected with source and things are going well to just feeling this, this depth of impossibility. And they also feel a lot of tension. You've got the gate 20, uh, 39 in there. Um, and these are people that need to really attend to self-care um, and to release tension and to express themselves. But they also need to understand that you are always going to have these waves of melancholy where you feel you know, really good and then you just, you just feel sad um, and maybe you feel ineffective. Um, it's not something for you to fix. The, when you're in the lower spaces, 
of melancholy, this is where you can do the deep work of really examining who you are and what your life is all about and, and kind of sit with it and get comfortable with it and accept it and recognize that you're always going to be going back and forth. There's not going to be any end to it. So awareness of it, working with it, valuing it is, um, is what's going to help you deal with that energy. Again, we're coming, we're past the out, top of the hour now. Um, did you want it? I'm willing to stay another five minutes. I, I see one comment and two questions, but if that's up to you or would you are about, would you like to share that you are available? Because this is something that a lot of these questions, especially when you can see the whole chart and you can have mm -hmm. one on one conversation yeah. with Caroline, she is available. I am available um, for readings and I also like to do uh, packages with uh, readings and then follow up coaching so that I can support clients with applying the information in their chart and give them feedback and um, come up with strategies on how they can live effectively as a projector. Um, I can be found on the specialist page on the quantum alignment page and um, uh, you're welcome to contact me there. Uh, I also have, um, I can be reached at caroline0178 at yahoo.com. Um, Teresa had a chart and a question, so maybe we can do that, that as our final one. Um, Mary had the chart. Teresa, I didn't see Teresa. Do you see something in my chart? Because I, I, oh, maybe that was above it. I was just saying relationships. Do you see something in my chart? Um, that's why there was a chart right above that. That's why I was thinking it was hers. I will, I will look and see if it's. I think that one this is another one from Mary. Um, yeah, that's Alex's chart again. Um, uh, Therese, one thing I would say, um, you know, be, I, that could possibly be a triple split or a quad split issue. Um, if, if someone resists being in relationship, uh, it's, they, they can have challenges with trying to determine what they want. But, you know, without seeing the chart, I really can't speak on that. If the, Therese, the only way if you could give us a link, then we could call it up. But the, some of the comments, I mean, lots of lovely comments that this has been very, like care, Micah said, thank you, Caroline. I don't have any close friends where I live now, which is very unusual for me. I'm trying to move home as I hear others have the same problem. It's very mm -hmm. clicky here in Dorset, southwest of England. For the time being, I chat to death. Anybody I can get a hold of here. Micah, she was the, as you comment, um, had taught us the mental projector. Um, and Carol says, and I'm a 5-1 emotional projector with a chart that designed that says I'm a teacher. I want to start a group to support people by sharing my knowledge. This would give me pleasure, but do I still need to wait for an invitation? She clarifies yeah. an invitation to start the group. I mean, I assume if people attended the group, they would be inviting my knowledge. Right, right. Um, you know, you're welcome to, to start it. Um, provided that you know you have the expectation that it may not take off, but a five-one projector people, you know, you attract people in. Um, you can also attract their criticisms and their judgment. So um, being a little thick-skinned is is helpful. But you you would be a great teacher. Um, you can ask. You know, you can invite people. But that's the thing about projectors. Not only are we waiting for the invitation, but we can invite people to. And then when people accept our invitation, we can take that as an invitation. So if you word your class in such a way that I invite you and you take the focus off yourself and onto the content that you want to share, that would be an appropriate projector strategy. Thank you so much. I will Thank post you, um, the link to Carolyn's page on the quantum alignment system. Uh, what kind of reading from you would be best for me, struggling author mother? Um, I think everybody always benefits from a um, 
you know, an initial reading of just understanding their energies. Um, when I do reading, I base it on what's going on in the person's life at that time. We call it a catalytic conversation, as opposed to just giving you a bunch of information in your chart that may not be as relevant to you at this period of your life as other information is. Um, so, so, yeah, just a basic, yes. basic reading. Thank you everyone for joining me. This was fun. Um, I just want to recognize you all as projectors and remind you of how precious we are and how important we are in the world. And I just honor all of you for being here and, and you know, using your energy to um, be in this space today.